Okay. Hi guys. It is another nasty cold midwinter night here. And I guess now late October. It is an exciting Saturday night. October 21st, 2023. Here at Bugs in a Jar Farm, good lord, and now that my little dog has been uh, returned by the space aliens who abducted him today. So my little dog got abducted by space aliens for four hours today. Yes, did you get abducted by space aliens yourself? And uh, good lord, after that scare, guys, I tell you, somehow I'm getting my mind back on other things but since it is a Saturday night we have a full contingent here at Bugs in a Jar all three tiny houses rented on this nasty night so I am sitting back inside the Hambone Hilton thinking what am I going to do for my space alien Saturday rant and uh <coughs> you know, guys, I still don't know where I am with this Aliens and Doomer YouTube channel. I might get that off the ground, or I'll still just keep doing this every Saturday on Humpty Dumpty Tribe. So I'm going to throw that 15-minute time limit out the window uh, and just run with it. So what are we going to talk about tonight? I think what I want to talk about, something that I've brushed up on against is, are space aliens, are they extraterrestrial or interdimensional? And this is where we really get to have a lot of fun. Um, this whole notion of space aliens being you know, three-dimensional living little creatures flying around in UFOs coming in from other planets. It, it's, it's never sat well with me. And that all those damn movies, E.T. was, of course, the worst one, where this term space alien just automatically gets lumped in with extraterrestrial, meaning, you know, from another planet, is that the vast, vast majority of people, when they are uh, talking about, quote, space aliens, they're talking about living creatures coming in from other planets. And... This whole thing has never completely sat well with me. Uh, you know, I, I, I speak from my own experience. In, uh, in 22 years, there was only one thing that ever happened with me in my entire life. And this is just some hazy memory, some weird little memory that I had when I was probably about five years old and growing up in Atlanta, Georgia, which would have made my sister about 12 years old. And my sister, who does not believe in any of this, uh... My sister, she used to have nightmares growing up about being kidnapped by giant praying mantises. That this was a recurring nightmare in her life. And I remember one day her telling me, I thought everybody had nightmares about being kidnapped by giant praying mantises. And I told her, I have never in my life Never once have I ever had a dream, a nightmare, whatever you want to call it, about being kidnapped by giant praying mantises. But my sister, who does not 
believe in any of this space alien abduction horseshit. Uh, she just says it's just normal nightmares of being kidnapped by giant praying mantises. Who knows? Maybe that's it. Maybe she has the explanation. But the only hint that I ever had an encounter with something outside of my own brain, meaning from another dimension, was that I was out in my driveway, uh, probably about five years old, which would make it around uh, 1964 or 1965, being out it in my driveway in the middle of the night, uh, and encountering my 12-year-old sister out there, and she finds me out there in the yard, <clears throat> And she says, what in the hell are you doing out here? I mean, what the hell was a 12-year-old girl doing out there in the middle of the night? And what in the hell was a 5-year-old child doing out there in the middle of the night? I was always running around with my brother, uh, who's since died uh, a year older than me. He was nowhere in this memory. And several of these things that I've had over my life have somehow tangentially involved my sister. So my brother, who would have been out there with me, was not there. It was me and my sister, and she said, what are you doing out there? And I don't even remember what I was talking about, but what I said to her was they were sh they were showing me all of these lights and dials and things like like on their dashboard i i just have some fleeting memory of of like a dashboard with with a lot of weird lights and dials and stuff uh, and remember standing outside of my house in the middle of the night telling my sister that they were showing me uh, all of these weird lights. So maybe it was just a regular dream that I had 60 years ago, going on 60 years, that I have just always had a memory of this very bizarre dream uh, that has stuck with me my entire life. My sister has zero memory of what I'm talking about. She has no memory of ever finding me out at midnight in our driveway when she was 12 and I was 5. But other than that, that one hazy little memory of whatever the fuck happened there. And maybe it was just a dream that was so powerful. That dream was so powerful, it stuck with me for all these years. But outside of that, for the 22 years that I was, quote, abducted by space aliens, and I really need to start using <clears throat> the... Uh, the term experiencer instead of uh, abductee and all that. The, the 22 years where I was an experiencer, which were uh, between 1978 and uh, 2000, for those 22 years when I was having these experiences, 100% of them is when I was asleep in bed, physically asleep in bed. You know, I've mentioned in story, telling this story before that, you know, I was married for seven years. And, and, and my wife 
uh, you know, witnessed me having these episodes. I clearly have never in my life physically been abducted, you know what I'm saying, by a, a, a biological being taken on to a metal ship and uh, that, that, that has never happened. What I have experienced, I think I've heard it called liminal, liminal abductions is the official term in the literature, I guess. And, and it's my guess that um, probably... I'm just throwing it out there because it happened to me. My guess is at least 90% of these abductions that you hear about uh, are these liminal abductions because, you know, even John Mack, my hero, you know, he's talking about the same thing where one of the people he was uh, working with, she was married and her husband was there witnessing her, you know, quote, unconscious, lying there in their bedroom when this happened. Uh, and because it has happened to me how many times, 50 times, I don't know, uh, over 22 years, uh, I just think that it explains the vast, vast majority of, uh, of these, quote, alien abductions. Now, what it does not explain are things like the Betty and Barney Hill case or the Travis Walton case or the Pascagoula, Mississippi case where there, you know, frequently there are multiple people abducted, uh, sometimes in the broad daylight, uh, where they were not asleep. They were wide awake, either in a car, fishing, whatever, and they encountered with other witnesses seeing the UFOs and uh, coming back with their wild stories. I mean, if you don't know Barney and Betty Hill and Travis Walton and the Pascagoula, uh, Mississippi abductions and, and, and a bunch more of them, it does not explain those abductions. I don't know what the hell, uh, what happened to me uh, how that relates what happened to Betty and Barney Hill and Travis Walton and that group. I do think there is probably some connection. I don't think it is an either-or. I think it's a both-and. But uh, I do not have any personal, personal experience. I've never met anyone who's ever had an experience like that, I mean, other than at uh, UFO uh, meetings and stuff. So I'm not here to talk about those, but I love to hear those stories. And, and, and so what happened to me, uh, a lot of people would say correctly one of two things that it was only a dream and be done with it. Andy the Gardener, uh, Colony of Cells, uh, whoever, Paul Whetstone, Hambone, it was just a recurring nightmare, uh, probably from all of those damn E.T. movies and Close Encounters of the Third Kind and all of that crap. So it didn't happen. It wasn't real. Or it was, uh, you know, my mother, uh, who was a shrink and studied a lot about the brain and stuff, you know, she always told me 
I don't know what is going on with you, but at some point in your life, you will find out it is something to do with an imbalance in brain chemistry. It has something to do with chemistry in your brain that is going haywire. And she went to the grave before I figured out, once again, my mother was exactly right. What happened to me over the that course of 22 years was a brain chemistry haywire. It was from DMT being, DMT dumps, you know, DMT, which is made in your pineal gland, being dumped into my brain, something triggering too much DMT, which is a natural brain chemical we secrete every night. And so what has gone on with me, I am, I, I being, you know, dealing with this for 22 years and researching this, uh, this whole phenomenon of alien abduction and the very closely related phenomenon of sleep paralysis. Uh, so... Like like one video you'll find on YouTube is this Harvard whatever claiming it is sleep paralysis. Yes, it is. It is sleep paralysis. So because it is, so that's the explanation. It's sleep paralysis. That's the explanation. It's brain chemistry malfunction. That's the explanation. Uh, you, you, quote, dreamed it, and that, for most people, is the end of the line on the discussion. Well, it's not the end of the line uh, on the discussion. It's, uh, it, it opens up an entire new level of, uh, 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 of mystery and research. And, and again, you know, trying to put 22 years of hell in, into a video. So one more time, and I have never a, encountered anybody with this story. I have never once in my entire life, in the hundreds if not thousands of accounts, I have never found one other human being with my story. My story is that in these dreams, for a better word, these dreams, these nightmares, whatever you want to call these, these liminal abductions, this space, this sleep paralysis, 100% of the time I would be, quote, dreaming, and I would have this very intense dream about UFOs approaching. They would, uh, they would be approaching, and I would see them coming, and they would be shining these beams of light down. <coughs> and I would... Uh, be running away from these beams of light uh, and and whatnot. But in 100% of dreams I have ever had about a UFO, I have gone into a major sleep paralysis episode where the, these, whatever these little fuckers are, uh, appear. I have never been laid on a table. Uh, I have never been poked. I have never been probed. I have never had sex with a female space alien, goddammit. I've never had anything rammed up my nose uh, mainly because I would not let these little fuckers catch me. Uh, 
I, I, I was, you know, doing everything to get away from the little fuckers. They weren't getting anywhere near me. Uh, I so, but these these UFOs would show up in my dreams, and I would go into these major, absolutely terrifying sleep paralysis episodes. You know, where you cannot move, you can't, you don't think you're breathing, you're wondering if your heart is moving. Uh, it, 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 they're the most terrifying things that you will ever experience. Frequently, but not always, they are accompanied by some shadowy little figures in the room with you. Uh, you can, you know, and again, you've heard all of this shit a thousand times with the incubus and the succubus that re the, these reports of these little creatures go back hundreds of years uh, before UFOs ever, uh, ever entered our culture. But what is, as I say, so 100% percent of the time I've dreamed about UFOs has triggered the sleep paralysis episodes. I have never one time in my life had a dream about a UFO that I remember that did not result in a sleep paralysis episode. So on one hand, 100 percent of my UFO dreams have triggered a sleep paralysis episode, but I've never had a UFO dream that did not. It is a 100% correlation. The UFO came first. The UFO and the beam of light came first. It was the UFO, and I'm thinking something to do with that beam of light triggered the paralysis episode, not the other way around. Okay, and, and then the flip side of that, to the best of my knowledge, I have never one time in my entire life had a sleep paralysis episode that was triggered by anything other than a UFO. So, uh, throughout my life, uh, I would say the most common theme repeating in dreams, and these usually are not nightmares because I'm not afraid of snakes, but I dream about snakes all the damn time. And, and I like snakes fine, but I have never... Are you following me? I have never had a dream about a snake which led to a, to a sleep paralysis episode. Zero correlation. 100% uh, of these uh, sleep paralysis episodes were triggered by these UFO sightings. Uh, ending up in these terrifying sleep paralysis episodes frequently, but I would say, yeah, pretty much always accompanied by these little things, and, and, and since there's a damn UFO flying around with the damn uh, beam coming down, I, you, you, you know, I, I make the ridiculous jump that uh, maybe these little creatures are, for lack of a better word, space aliens. And uh, so anyway, 22 years I, I uh, suffered from this, and I, I've put the rant out there a couple of times. I will try to find the link to it. How I kicked a space alien's ass and this was when I was 40 years old, the night before I moved to Austin, Texas, when I was actually at a, yeah, I was in a sleep paralysis online support group, and a, a woman 
who suffered from sleep paralysis over in London, England, told me any time I want to stop this from happening, what I do is invite the UFOs and the space aliens in, which is like inviting a chipmunk to have Sancho Panza over for tea for someone who has dealt with these evil little fuckers for 22 years to suggest that they invite them in, give them permission to come in. And, I, and I'm quite sure I could do this tonight or any night. And, and, uh, and, and so I did that. I unbelievably, when I was going to sleep, that night, I said, okay, you little fuckers, come give me your best shot. Instead of fighting them, I invited them to come in and give me their best shot. Went to sleep. Within 10 minutes of me falling asleep, that UFO and, and those little space aliens were there. And uh, that, that story it takes about 45 minutes. Anybody who is suffering from, from this horrible shit, the, this uh, sleep paralysis, particularly if it's being triggered by UFOs, <clears throat> there is, well, it's not an easy cure. It's the hardest cure. It's the hardest thing you will ever do in your life. But you got to trust me. If, if, if your life is being ruined by this, as mine was for 22 years, you go to sleep tonight and you invite them in. And if you're like me and like this woman over there in London, England, you, you invite these little guys to come uh, visit you and give you their best shot. Uh, they will come. You will have one last encounter with them like I did, and you will. it will never happen again. After that night, like that, I had my last meeting with them. Uh, I woke up the next morning... That was now 23 years ago. That was in uh, 2000. I have never one time, never once, in 23 years, have I had either a dream about a UFO or an episode of sleep paralysis. was cured in one night by saying, I'm no longer afraid. I'm not giving you my power. I'm not giving you my fear. Come see me. Let's talk this out. And uh, as I say, you can go listen to that rant, that what happened that night. So anyway, that's where I left it. And it was probably two or three years later that the book DMT, The Spirit Molecule, by Dr. Rick Strassman came out. And there it was, laid out. At least what uh, was happening to me and probably thousands, if not millions, of people in, in different forms, although DMT, the spirit molecule, does not, it barely mentions alien abduction. But uh, what it explains is, uh, what is it, dimethyl tryptamine or whatever DMT is, you know, this Terrence McKenna talking about it. It's the stuff that's in ayahuasca uh, is DMT. Uh, so if you've heard about ayahuasca, it's the same thing. 
And every one of us, we have this little thing in our head called the pineal gland that secretes DMT. And it looks like the reason that we have this thing is so we don't act out our dreams. Imagine what what could happen with that, like sleepwalking is probably you don't get enough DMT. And, uh, and sleep paralysis, I, I am convinced after reading DMT, the spirit molecule, is my guess is that too much is secreted and you are you're completely paralyzed you have no ability to move it's the complete opposite of of uh, of sleepwalking so you're essentially going on a dmt trip and anybody who has listened to terence mckenna or, or maybe you've taken dmt or ayahuasca yourself and, and had some of these encounters that while under the effects of DMT or ayahuasca, it is extremely common uh, in, in, in the literature that you encounter what did Terence McKenna call them? Self-replicating machine elves what was his. They, they, they take various different forms. And if you spend some time researching these ayahuasca shamans who have, who, you know, spend their lives, uh, you know, do, leading people through ayahuasca trips and whatnot, you look at their artwork and over and over again, going back centuries, I, you will find in these ayahuasca shaman paintings, you will see both UFOs and these little guys. They are common characters uh, that uh, ayahuasca shamans, you know, talking about these little entities these little entities that you encounter when you have a, a DMT shock. Uh, and so at Rick Strassman getting himself in more trouble than John Mack ever got himself in, uh, when he, you know, after doing this research for several years, which he talks about, he had no choice and, and this is a classically trained medical doctor. Uh, he had no choice but to conclude from his years of research uh, on these DMT studies that these entities, whatever you want to call them, these elves, these incubus, these succubus, these space aliens, whatever, these little creatures are very real. They're sure as hell real to the person experiencing them, which in Rick Strassman's case was a person, quote, asleep on a, on a bed in a, in a clinical setting. The person was there, but they were clearly having interactions with other beings, you know, communicating with, 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 uh, with other beings and having various interactions with them over and over again. They didn't always 100% match, but, uh, you, you know... Uh, enough of these reports come back and uh, Dr. Rick Strassman uh, had no other choice but to conclude that these beings while inside the person's head 
were real and they were coming from other dimensions. And what they travel on, these very real entities that these people were uh, communicating and interacting with, travel on the DMT molecule. This is how from is from our pineal gland. Uh, the the third eye you might have heard uh, you might have heard it described as the third eye. Sometimes these chakra people they will talk about it as the crown chakra, the third eye. Uh, so many cultures uh, talk about this. Uh, it, 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 it's the pineal gland that uh, that secretes a DMT and these little goblins or space aliens or whatever hitch a ride on DMT molecules and cross the uh, spirit boundary and uh, this it is and, and when I read this, it was like, my God, 25 years uh, of wondering what the hell, and I don't care how outrageous it sounds, once again, Mom was right. So, if it makes you happy, Andy or whoever, saying, Hambone, your mother was right, it was brain chemistry. It was a brain chemistry imbalance. If that explains it, that doesn't explain shit. It, 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 if that is the explanation, and I believe 100% that it is the explanation, the, the, the obvious conclusion to that explanation is the one that Rick Strassman came to, and needless to say, uh, his life was turned upside down and ruined when he came up with this. And, uh, but for all I know, guys, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Uh, I, I, I don't know, I will never know what it was that triggered these. It, I, I think there is an electromagnetic component. Something to do with electromagnetism. This is a guess. I'm not 100% sure. The very, very first time this happened to me was when I was 18. How this whole thing started is I was on these antidepressants, on these major doses of antidepressants called Triavil. It was Elavil and two other chemicals that I was taking every day. Uh, I was taking a pretty heavy dose that I had to take every day, and I went to visit a friend of mine uh, outside of Atlanta by several hours. I forgot my medication. I was going to be gone three days, and I said, okay, I hope it stays in my system for three days. Well, it didn't. So I cold turkeyed this, uh, the, the, these hardcore antidepressants, and on, uh, I believe it was the second night, so it had probably been 48 to 60 hours since I had taken these. I went from a high dosage cold turkeying. That was what uh set off this very first episode of this with the UFOs and the space aliens and the sleep paralysis is when my brain was shocked by accidentally cold turkeying 
on, uh, on these goddamn antidepressants, which is why I will never take antidepressants. Um, and for the record, uh, so this all stopped in the year 2000. Uh, when I was 40 years old, I never once in my entire life, to this day, I have never taken a hit of acid. I had never in my life, throughout this entire experience, I had never done mushrooms one time. I had never done peyote. I had sure as hell never done ayahuasca or DMT. Never in my life. I had never taken a hit of marijuana for these 22 years. It had nothing to do with, uh, with hallucinogens. So take that little hilarious thing, flush it down the toilet, uh, and all I know is when I took that woman's advice and, and invited these little space aliens in and, and, and had this UFO in uh, sleep paralysis experience 23 years ago, never happened again. Goodbye and good riddance. Uh, I will go to my grave not knowing uh, what happened, but I am on board with Rick Strassman. These little fuckers, these space aliens, and all the rest of the gang, uh, whatever words you want to use for them, are real entities that travel on DMT. They are very real. They are interdimensional. It is the DMT hooks us into another dimension. It opens our brains up to another dimension of reality. And again, whatever the hell happened to Betty and Barney Hill and the rest of those people, I don't know. I am happy with the explanation of what happened to me and if you are suffering something similar that is my advice that's my story and I am sticking to it and uh, that will bring us to the end of this Saturday's edition of Space Alien Saturday so get out there and in Enjoy your DMT dumps while you still can. My little alien abducted dog. Did you have fun on your four hour uh, trip of missing time today, you little shit? Bye, guys. <laughs>